Hi everybody. I've got a little bit of old school tech to show you here. It's an RF ammeter from zero to three amps, although the scale you can see is only good from one to three amps of RF current. But um, I might be using this for my Tesla coil for to measure the secondary current. Um, but you can see just from its construction, it looks like an ordinary ammeter. It's got the moving coil in there with a the permanent magnet. But you can also see right here on the top, thermocouple type. So there's a thermocouple in there that converts the, the RF current into a DC current. So let me show you how it works first, and then I'll take it apart and show you the inside. Okay, so inside, there's just a resistance. It's really just a thin wire. I don't know exactly what material it's made of, but... It's about, I measured 80 milliohms, and right in the middle of that wire is the thermocouple junction. We got two dissimilar metals, and then they go to the ammeter. Just an ordinary DC ammeter where the current goes in one way and comes out the other. And um, the way this works is that you just put a current through here it could be DC, it could be 60 hertz, it could be 10 megahertz, doesn't matter. It'll all heat up the, the resistance all the same, and then that heat will act on the uh, thermocouple junction right here, which will generate a very small voltage difference across those two wires. And if you put an ammeter on there, you can measure the current, or you can even put a, a voltmeter right there and measure the voltage across it. But in this case, it's, uh, it's an ammeter. Okay, let me show it operating here for a minute. We got a 120 volt variac and sending the current through a big power resistor right here and measuring the current with the, the DMM and the RF ammeter. And I'm just gonna crank it up a little bit here. And there's definitely a delay between when I turn the knob and when the needle actually settles, and that's just because it, it's a thermal system, it, it actually, the, you know, the, the, the mass of the resistance has to heat up to a steady state temperature, and then it'll stabilize at the actual current that's going through it. But you can see it's very good. We got three amps here and three amps there. Turn it down to two. Turn it down to one amp. So um, this thing says it's patented February 21st, 1922, and um, it's still working good after all these years. It may have been made in the 20s, 30s, or 40s. It's a long time. Okay, when taking apart these old Weston meters, it's they usually have three screws on the side. There's one, two, and the third one is missing in here. So let me take off this one. And then the top one, this one actually had, used to have some potting material in there. The screw is recessed inside a little cup. And that was essentially the, uh, the warranty void label that we have today. There will be a little potting material there with a little tiny W stamp for the Weston Company. And that showed that it had, if that was still intact, that means it had never been opened. Take off the cover. It's always important to be careful here to very gently slide it off so you don't touch touch the, the moving needle at all. And turn on some light. And here you can see the permanent magnet here and there's the moving coil mechanism. But right back there You can see one wire 
going this way, the little U-shaped wire. And then there's two other wires. Those are the dissimilar metals going the other way. So this is the resistance, the 80 milliohm resistor. And um, then the other two wires that you can just barely see there, those are the two dissimilar metals for the thermocouple. And they all come together right there at the, uh, at the cross between all of them. So those wires are hooked up to these two copper strips on the top and bottom. And those copper strips go to these wires here. And then those, those two junctions, they go to the, uh, to the moving coil in the meter. Well, that's all I have for that. I might keep this as is for measuring my secondary current. If the, if the current is too small, then I might have to actually take this, take the thermocouple out or it's so delicate. I think I'll leave the thermocouple in and I'll remove the whole magnet assembly here. And um, I'll just use a thermocouple as is, maybe hook it up to a, a voltmeter instead of an ammeter so I can get uh, more sensitive readings for lower currents. Thanks for watching.